another problem to try. Pause the video and try this one. No big changes, just our same basic substitution steps. Be cautious about some of these details we've pointed out about having a negative coefficient where we have to distribute. But go ahead and try this one. Pause the video and work through it. Then restart the video and we'll go through the steps of the answer. Solving this system, we first identify the equation that's solved for y, y equals 2x minus 5. We're placing this expression, substituting it in place of y right here, 2x minus 5 going in place of that y. So let's carefully rewrite the equation. It starts with x minus y. Now I'd always substitute in parentheses, so here it is, 2x minus 5 inside parentheses, and it's key that we see a negative right here. Let's just finish this equation equals negative 6. Now when we see the negative in front of the parentheses, that is something that has to be thought of as part of a distributive process also. You either think, well I'm multiplying through a negative 1, or another way to look at it is that when we see a negative sign in front of a set of parentheses, it changes the sign of every single term inside. So this equation becomes, well first of all, the leading x stays as is, there's no reason to change that. The negative, here I'm showing with arrows where it's going, so x I'm recopying. Negative applied to the 2x makes it now not a positive 2x but a negative 2x. And then the negative applied to this negative 5 is changing it into a positive 5. This is a very common place to go off path to not be careful about this minus that is in front of parentheses. It needs to activate everything, every term inside the parentheses. It changes a 2x from positive to negative. It changes this negative 5 into a positive 5. That's how to handle that negative in front of the parentheses. The rest of the equation equals negative 6. Let's solve it being cautious. We have like terms, a 1x minus 2x leaves us with a negative 1x. If you just have negative x, that's perfect. Recopy the plus 5 equals negative 6. Now let's get our constants over here to the right side. I'm taking away 5 and showing it to you this time. So negative 1x equals negative 11. And dividing both sides by negative 1, we see x equals positive 11. Or you could say, well, if negative x equals negative 11, then you flip both sides. It means positive x has to equal positive 11. That's a fair way to handle things. Just be cautious with that move. Everything is truly backed up with our steps, our properties, that I can divide or multiply the same thing to both sides. I'm not just flipping things when I feel like it, but maybe you observe, well, if negative x equals negative 11, therefore positive x has to equal positive 11. That's true. And let's continue and find our value for y. Let's go up here. y equals 2x minus 5. So this is 2 times 11 minus 5. Order of operations, we're doing 22 minus 5. y equals 17. So we can maybe get some numbers that aren't close to 0. They're both numbers bigger than 10. But again, fair game. Fractions can happen. Big numbers can happen. So we've got them. We can always check x minus y, 11 minus 17, that does equal negative 6. And 2 times 11 minus 5 does equal 17. They check out. They have to be correct. So if you're ever not sure about your solutions, just do a check, and then you'll know for certain. And in this case, our solution, 11, 17.